Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 278 in our series, and our title today is The Call of the Disciple. Now, Scripture teaches <clears throat> the body of Christ is divided into two groups, believers and disciples. We want to give basically a biblical definition of these two groups. Believers are those who have truly accepted the Lord Jesus as Savior and Lord and have been born again. Turn to Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This necessitates a belief, heart belief, not head belief, <clears throat> that the Lord died, buried, and resurrected in payment of our transgressions. A <clears throat> unshakable belief of our own condition that we can't stand before God. We have transgressed and as a result we are under a judgment and only the Lord's sacrificial death, resurrection, on Calvary paid for our transgressions. A person believes that and confesses it, he becomes born again. He is saved. This alone eliminates a good percentage of churchgoers because they have not done this. Hmm. They don't comprehend this. Or they're not taught that. Hmm. True. <clears throat> Therefore, <clears throat> we find Disciples are those who are born again and who are willing to actually follow Jesus and pay the price for being a disciple. Mm -hmm. In other words, they go beyond the new birth, salvation. They embrace the life of Christ Amen. in its entirety. Now, <clears throat> the Lord illustrates the price for being a disciple. Uh, organized religion doesn't. Organized religion assumes that because you're born again, you're a disciple. Turn to Luke, the 14th chapter, and we're going to read verses 25 to 33. And there went out great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. This eliminates 99.99 tenths of believers from being a disciple because they don't hate their life, they love their life. They want to embrace, perfect, and enjoy their life. You know, the, the, the elephant in the room, Mr. Jones, is hating the mother and father. That needs to be explained to us, please. Well, it's, it's in comparison with your desire to love the Lord. He's talking about <clears throat> if you have an equal love for your parents, your wife, your son, your daughter, and you have for him, you're not his disciple. Mm -hmm. Your love for, 
for them has to be on a scale so below your love for him that it would be considered hate Hatred, yes. from a normal, natural perspective yes. because you are going to be considered rejecting them, re, or, or, or eliminating them, not taking them into consideration. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hence the difference between phileo and agape love. Oh, yes. yes. Can you yes. just reiterate that agape love can only be experienced by God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and <coughs> the sons. You have to be born again to experience agape love. Mm -hmm. Because agape love comes from the Holy Spirit. Right. But the point I was bringing out was not all those who were born again experience agape love. Why? Because they haven't pursued anything. They haven't moved further than... Yeah, they have the potential... Again. But if they don't have the will, no, they won't. Yeah, of course. They won't. Agape love is equated with eternal life. Yes. <clears throat> so let's go on. <clears throat> Verse 27, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. <clears throat> so he's saying automatically, if you pick up <clears throat> the cross, there's a cross. Yes. Which is basically... What he's saying here is that there's a burden that's already been crafted for you as a disciple. It's a custom-made burden. You can't pr uh, pr proceed in experience in life of Christ if you don't have a burden to carry. Yes. So, Mr. Jones, you, I think you just now answered the question. If you as a Christian are experiencing no burdens, then maybe you need to take a look at your commitment level. Mm. I would go as far as to say that if you're not experiencing anything, you're not a Christian. You can be a Christian. A Christian's a believer. And you can be sailing through. But it, we're talking about a disciple. Collecting blessings. Yes. Mercedes 500 oh, parks outside. You remember Joel Ch Osteen's church? Christ, come on. Rick Warren? Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't, no I can't call him. Yeah. I can't call him. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, let's go on. So Jesus gives basically the criteria for being a disciple. Verse 28, For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? So basically what he's saying here, unlike organized religious leaders, he's telling you, now that you're saved, <clears throat> I'm going to give you the prerequisites for following me. He's not saying <clears throat> I'm gathering as many followers as I can like organized religious leaders do. They want to increase the membership. Yeah. They want to uh, get as many in the fold as possible. That's not what Jesus is presenting here. He's saying You've embraced the prerequisite for salvation. Now I'm going to give you a choice. Right. You can continue or you can follow me. If you follow me, this is the price you're going to gotcha. have to pay. Okay. So he, he wants us to... He didn't count. want to have anybody entertain any illusions. Right, that's the point. He wants us to calculate the cost. Yes. To know the price before we move forward. Yes. <clears throat> Hence, think about it. Put your mind on it. Yeah. Don't just go through your life never even thinking about what right. we're talking right. about. Right. He goes on, Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation, he is not able to finish it. All that behold it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Now, what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth ambassage and desire conditions of peace. In other words, what he's saying here is if you, if you start off saying you want to be my disciple mm -hmm. because you've seen all the miracles I've done, you've seen the excitement that's generated, you want to be part of that, let me give you the basics. <coughs> Before you enter into this decision, I'm telling you now, there's a price you have to pay. And if you determine, okay, I want to do it, you're going to get downstream and realize you're still not willing to pay the price. It's too heavy. 
So I'm telling you, be gone before you start. It's a price to pay. <clears throat> He's not trying to coerce anybody into being a disciple. He's saying, if you want to be my disciple, this is a situation you got to take into consideration. Would you go as far as saying that he wants to dissuade those who are not fixed in their goal? Yeah. Yeah, he's trying to get them to understand what true Christianity is all about. Sacrifice. It starts with salvation, mm -hmm. born again experience. Mm -hmm. It's a progression into eternal life experiences. It is a weeding out process that separates the individual from this world of temporality to the world of eternality. But you pay a price to progress in that direction. Yes. Paul gives us the lesson where he literally looked for suffering. He embraced suffering in order to get more to come out of him to where he could grow and maximize his potential and become completed his course. Yes. He understood that later on in his progression. But initially he didn't understand it either <clears throat> until the time in which the Lord put the demon on him. <laughs> And he said, oh, well, you know, get this thing off of me. I said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Then he understood. Wow, I'm glad you did that, Lord. Now I understand. Is that the point at which he understood that everything was done? Yeah. Yes. But let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the hallmark of a disciple is a willingness to sacrifice for the benefit of others. John 10, 11, John 10, <clears throat> verses 11 and 12. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, mm. whose own the sheep or not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and <clears throat> scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. So what he's saying here, <coughs> if you are called to be a shepherd, in today's parlance, pastor, part of your calling is sacrificing for those you have been called to shepherd at the cost of your life. The good shepherd layeth down his life for the sheep. Pastors today behave as if just turning up is the sacrifice. Giving a sermon. Seriously. Giving a sermon. That's the, that's the sacrifice. They've sacrificed. That's why it's organized religion and not Christianity. Yeah. <clears throat> and not only that, it reciprocates. The brethren. You enter into a relationship as a disciple. Remember what he said. Hate not your own life. You would be willing to lay down your life for your brother. Mm. You would be willing to go all the way. All, all. You look for your brother to have his benefit before your own benefit. You love your brother more than you love yourself. This is the way the body of Christ is designed to operate, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the love of Christ. The Lord said, you see me set the example, you follow my example if you want to be my disciple. If you just want to be a believer, and God's got no problem with that, go on and be a believer. You're saved, you enjoy your time, on earth but when you leave this place 
That's where the X, Y axis crosses. Let me give you an example. The disciple spends his time not pursuing his own life, but pursuing the life of Christ. <coughs> Turn to Galatians, third chapter, verse 27 to 29. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are developing the life of Christ, not our own life. <clears throat> in Christ, we die to our own life, our own identity. We just read it. There's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, black, white, uh, uh, <clears throat> whatever it is you were before in Christ, it died. All things are passed away. All, A-L-L. -L. There's not one thing that you experienced before that from God's perspective died when you became born again. Born into a totally new existence. Should each of us consider ourselves as Jesus? We think mm -hmm. as Jesus did, we speak as Jesus did, we behave as Jesus did, and there's nothing else. That's the life of the disciple. Mm. You're taking on the life of Christ. Yes. The life of a believer is you're saved and you're still continuing on to enjoy life in that position. To exactly replicate his. He's the first of our, our race. Yes, this is what we call so prototokis. To mm -hmm. Now... What does that mean? That means in this life, you lose everything. You uh, go, uh, turn turn to Colossians, third chapter. Third chapter. Yes. Verse 1 to 3. <clears throat> if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. For Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. What does he mean? It means if you have now taken on the life of Christ, you died with him, you rose with him, you are now emulating him. This is what you do. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you're dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. What does that mean? That means you cut your connection with the earth. Mm. The blessings of earth are no longer yours. The life of earth is no longer yours. The things of earth no longer pertain to yeah. you. You're all dead to that. Yes. The thing where we are afar, we are to die to. To be light. Yes. <clears throat> now, in this respect, what does this mean? This means that we come into our own, not in this life. We come into our own after this life. What we are doing in this life is developing our eternality as a disciple of Christ. The Lord had nothing in this life. He died totally bereft of everything, even his clothes, had no inheritance. He didn't even have a place to be buried. It was a borrowed grave. The same with us. We have no part in this life if we're a disciple of Christ. And I'll give you a news flash. You want no part in this life as a disciple. Why? <clears throat> We're going to take a look at this and see. Romans 8, verse 17. <clears throat> Verse 
What are we pursuing as disciples of Christ? Same thing he pursued, the kingdom. And of children and heirs, the heirs of God and join the heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. We have an inheritance. Colossians tells us the inheritance is nothing to do with earth, the life of earth, the things of earth. Your inheritance is hid with Christ. <clears throat> you come into your inheritance as a faithful follower of Christ. Yes. Okay. So what just shot through my mind, and I'm sorry, I hope it's not interrupting our lesson, but the thing of it is to see Jesus not having an earthly father, he is implanted into Mary. She gives birth to the baby. Okay, so now, before he became that progeny in Mary, he was with the father. So now, how are we supposed to replicate that? Well, we go through this born again experience, but more than that, we understand that we came from an angelic origin before we became who we are here on this earth. So literally, we are walking as, as closely as we can to Christ, what Christ did. I mean, what the mannerism that he went through. So we were angelic. Now we've put in a way, we've given that up, and we're now we're human, which is a lower, lower level, but we are going through the same steps that Christ went through, and we are going to end up the same way Christ did, with the Father in heaven, in a glorified state. And that... Mr. Jones, he, it's, it's as close as I, I'm imagining it now for the first time to the point that I am now. And I'm sorry that I interrupted the lesson, but it's like he's done it all. What we have to do is not blow it and we become what we're supposed to be in God's creation. And that's just amazing. If, if, if we embrace the life of the disciple, it's conditional. We will be glorified together if we suffer with him. The life of a disciple is a life of sacrifice. Denial. Love. Now, we want to take a look at this. <clears throat> we talked about the inheritance. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, verse 10. <clears throat> As we progress in life, as we embrace the life of Christ, we become more and more Christ-like. As we determine willfully <clears throat> that we are going to mortify the flesh, the desires of the human, and embrace the desires of the divine, we become more molded into the image of the divine divine son after we pass this life we step into 2nd Corinthians the 5th chapter verse 10 <clears throat> for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad this is where the XY axis crosses, and we're talking now before the beginning of sorrows. Mm -hmm. It's where the XY axis crosses in the life of a disciple. You now step before the Lord to have everything you have done examined and evaluated according to God's principles. Amen. So it's going to divide you into one of two, a believer or a disciple. Why did you mention before the beginning of sorrows? What if because somebody passes after the beginning of sorrows? Well, then it goes into a different situation. You're going to step into your inheritance here on earth, not at the Bema Sea in heaven. <clears throat> so if somebody dies after the beginning of sorrows, before the gathering, they don't stand before the Bema Sea of Christ. Well, if you, in other words, if you die at the beginning of sorrows, you're on your way to the gathering. So everything in the inheritance. We remember Ephesians, the first chapter, he's going to gather everything in heaven and in earth in one when he comes back. What I'm asking is, why is the person not being evaluated before the Bema Seat? Just because they died after the beginning of the Because Christ is coming to earth to evaluate the inheritance of the Prototokos. 
before the beginning of sorrows, you're going to go to heaven. So after you evaluate. To stand before the evaluation. Okay, okay, okay. That's so, why I say everything changes at the beginning of sorrows. So where does the person appear when he dies after the beginning of sorrows? Where does he appear to, after the beginning of sorrows? Mm. On earth. So he stays on earth? Yeah. Until the Lord comes at the gathering? Until the Lord comes at the gathering because he's going to wait to get his inheritance. Mm. He's completed his course. He dies. Remember, earth and heaven are now connected. connected. It's a new reality. Okay. Connect. Now they're separated. Okay. You die now, you right. go in there. Gotcha. Not, okay. not on earth. But okay. then everything is in one connection. Right. So <laughs> you said a key thing that I didn't ask the question, but you answered it. When do we complete our courses? And you said... It's divided into the time of the gathering. We can complete our course before the beginning of sorrows. Romans, I mean, First, Second Corinthians 5.10. You're going to leave earth. You're going to stand before the beam of seat okay. in the heavens. Okay. <clears throat> you evaluate it for what you have done. Then you go to your estate right. in the heavens. Right. After the beginning of sorrows, everything changes because the heavens and the earth are now going to be connected. You're going to stand before the Lord. He's coming back to earth to evaluate every body in the body of Christ who's gathered before him. So those, those uh, uh, who die in Christ from the beginning of sorrows through to the end of the gathering, that's Luke uh, 21, 36. Yes. Uh, they, yes. They, they come out of the ground and stand before him there. They're going to yeah, okay. be gathered, okay. people, whether dead or alive. All right. But, so yeah. if you're in the gathering, you are going to receive your inheritance. Yes. yes. Is everybody going to receive the same amount of inheritance? No. No, you're, you're evaluated according to your works. And not everyone's going to receive their inheritance at that point. No. If the Look angel at the priest, wicked servant. Exactly. Exactly. You're going to get judged, cast into uh, the torment regions. Yeah. But it is a time in which the inheritance is going to be distributed mm -hmm. to those who are either disciples or, <clears throat> well, the disciple at that point becomes a teacher. Yes. And then steps into his inheritance right. as a prototokist teacher. Right. So yes. as I was looking at this, okay, <laughs> we're going through this, is I was confusing the rapture. Mm -hmm. At the rapture, we get the fullness. If you make the rapture, you right. get the fullness. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. So yes. we're understanding then that the, as you've been teaching us for a while, it takes a while to sink in. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're understanding that the beginning of sorrows really is a whole new reality. Because if those who die in Christ literally change locations of appearance after they're dead, then we understand that the Lord, for want of a better term, has brought the heavens to the earth in, yes. that, in terms of that's the connection. Yes, that's what Paul's talking about. Yeah. <clears throat> He's saying that <clears throat> the Father's purpose in the fullness of times is to gather in one all right. things in Christ right. which are in heaven and which are on earth in one in Him. So those who are already in the heavens at the point of the gathering, Luke 21, 36, where do they, do they stay where they are or do they come? It's dependent on what you qualify for. Let's say they qualify for a uh, priest angel. So the, Then uh, they're gonna get received their inheritance. Peter, James, Paul, <coughs> where, where will they be at Luke 21, 36? I would say, depending upon if you were called to be an angel over the churches, Paul, you're gonna step into Peter, your inheritance. James, at, right. At Luke 21, okay. verse 27. So they leave, they leave their estates in the heavens to take up their positions in the heaven of heavens. Yeah, turn to Ephesians, first chapter. Okay. Mr. Jones, if you can do it. If we can add another day, please, brother, please do it. Mm -hmm. I can't get enough of this, and I don't mm -hmm. want to miss out. Amen. I, want to, I want to get it all. Amen. <laughs> Where are we going? Ephesians Luke. 1. Uh, Ephesians, first chapter, ten and eleven. 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So you have the heavens and earth connected. Notice what it says in verse 11. In whom also we, 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 so Paul is including himself. Right. We have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. <clears throat> so Paul is saying, you're stepping into your inheritance as a disciple who now becomes a faithful teacher in the prototokis. Right. You have completed the requirements. You're going to receive your inheritance when he comes in the gathering. Okay. Yes. Hence, <clears throat> completed your course? Yes. Okay. Yes. But wasn't his course completed, uh, completed at the point that he passed? <clears throat> Yes, this was completed when he, when he passed. Ours is completed at the gathering. Okay. Everybody gets their reward during right. the same time. Right. When we get together again, the difference between what's coming to the disciple at this point and what's coming to the, the believer. believer. Yes. 